Uh, you have recently visited the Uyghur American community in Northern Virginia. So what was your message to them when you visited them? There's a significant Uyghur diaspora community out in Fairfax, Virginia, yeah. about a 45-minute 40, uh, drive right. from here. And mm -hmm. it was incredibly inspiring and significant to me to be invited into the community by the Uyghur American Association mm -hmm. to meet with them, hear their concerns directly, share the work that we are doing in our department mm -hmm. to protect them uh, every day. And my mm -hmm. message was, this is a community that needs our protection and deserves our protection. Mm -hmm. The story of the Uyghur people must be told mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there are forces in the People's of Republic of China that do mm -hmm. not want that story to be told mm -hmm. and are taking active measures to silence that story, to cleanse that story. And we will not allow that here in the United States. Yes. and. Uh of course, transnational repression is a very big thing for the Uyghur American community. I'm sure some of them voice their concerns as well. So uh, at the Department of Homeland Security, what kind of measures uh, have been taken to protect uh, Uyghur Americans from China's transnational repression? What we've seen more and more from mm -hmm. autocratic regimes like China, but mm -hmm. also Russia, Iran, and others mm -hmm. is an increasing effort not just to repress people in their own countries, mm -hmm. but to reach out to diaspora communities abroad to repress and intimidate people there, including in the United States, and mm -hmm. especially vulnerable populations like the Uyghur community. What we've done at the Department of Homeland Security is we've identified this as a problem that offends our American values, mm -hmm. our rights to freedom of expression mm -hmm. and religion and more. And we are taking steps to protect communities from transnational repression. Mm -hmm. For example, we launched last year mm -hmm. a vulnerable community cybersecurity program where communities like the Uyghurs can come in and get advice at no charge on how to protect themselves from cybersecurity threats mm -hmm. from foreign governments that may seek to hack their phones mm -hmm. uh, or conduct digital surveillance on them. That's really important to us. We also have been leaning very strongly on Interpol, the International mm -hmm. Law Enforcement Association, to make sure that mm -hmm. their law enforcement processes are not abused mm -hmm. by authoritarian regimes like China mm -hmm. that would seek to use legitimate law enforcement channels mm -hmm. to crack down on dissidents, right. human rights activists, mm -hmm. and the like, which has been a major problem. Mm -hmm. And we are Interpol's biggest donor. So we have made clear that this mm -hmm. is a very high priority for us. At our urging, Interpol has made some significant reforms, which is good to see, mm -hmm. but more needs to be done. Uh, we have seen over the past years Chinese agents calling from China, harassing and threatening some of the Uyghur Americans here in the U.S. But we see increasingly like individuals and certain groups, you know, these are Uyghurs I'm talking about, they openly attack on a daily basis against Uyghur prominent Uyghur leaders and the legitimate Uyghur organizations. So my question is, uh, does uh, Homeland Security do anything to protect them as well? If there are any individuals mm -hmm. that are uh, engaged in illegal transnational repression mm -hmm. practices, we will use every law enforcement tool mm -hmm. at our disposal mm -hmm. to disrupt them and mm -hmm. to protect vulnerable communities. Mm -hmm. If there are agents the foreign government that are doing that in violation of their visa restrictions, mm -hmm. that could be an, a, 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 a cause of investigation. We work closely with the FBI, mm -hmm. we work closely with state and local law enforcement mm -hmm. to, do, to make sure that any agent of transnational repression, whether they be a direct agent of a foreign government mm -hmm. or an intermediary, mm -hmm. are investigated and disrupted and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. How can a Uyghur who is, for example, uh, received a message from a Chinese agent on WhatsApp or Signal, you know, saying, we are holding your mother or your sister, you need to do ABC for us. How can the person basically report this to FBI or to the Department of Homeland Security and they get the sort of protection that you are talking about? We have field offices around mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. where community members can mm -hmm. reach out and report that information to us. 
as soon as possible so that we can help protect them mm -hmm. and investigate. And I know, uh, Aline, that you, you mentioned threats to uh, punish family members right. that reside yes. Yes. back in the home country. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people call them exit bans. Mm -hmm. Some people call it hostage taking. Yeah. Right. And it's an alarming mm -hmm. and inhumane practice. Mm -hmm. And when I've met with members of the Uyghur American community here, mm -hmm. or other diaspora Uyghur mm -hmm. communities, mm -hmm. European mm -hmm. cities and the like, I hear heartbreaking stories of family members of theirs that are being impri effectively imprisoned, not right. allowed yes. to leave mm -hmm. China because of what their activist relatives uh, have made of their lives in the United mm -hmm. States mm -hmm. uh, or Europe. Our administration has been very direct mm -hmm. with the Chinese government about the importance of allowing people to come together with their family and leave the country mm -hmm. if they want to. This is going to continue to be an ongoing focus of ours. And uh, uh, regarding Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, of course, DHS is uh, implementing the policy for nearly two years. Uh, confiscate a lot of products made uh, by Uyghur forced labor, and uh, but we still see some products uh, the Chinese government made in Xinjiang. For example, if you go to Asian or Korean markets here, we'll, you'll find like red dates coming from uh, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, and some dates actually are made by the Xinjiang Production Constru uh, Construction Corp. Which, is, which has been sanctioned by the U.S. government. So uh, what are the challenges for the DHS to implement the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act at this point? Our enforcement of this landmark new law, the Uyghur mm -hmm. Forced Labor Prevention Act, mm -hmm. has been strong. Yeah. We have detained over $2.6 billion mm -hmm. of cargo in less than two years under this act, mm -hmm. thousands of shipments mm -hmm. across a variety of industry sectors, tomatoes, cotton products, apparel, polysilicon, uh, aluminum and metals, automotive parts, mm -hmm. uh, and more, agri various agricultural products, uh, and more. Uh, our work is certainly not done. Mm -hmm. Supply chains are incredibly complex. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you will often have six, seven, eight tiers down the supply chain mm -hmm. that need to be investigated to determine if some component or subcomponent mm -hmm. may be coming from Xinjiang province. Right. Uh, and that requires a lot of work on our part and also mm -hmm. on the part of importers and American companies that want to do the right thing but face mm -hmm. challenges in understanding the downstream provenance. Mm -hmm. But clearly, our enforcement of this law mm -hmm. is impacting supply chains. It is moving mm -hmm. supply chains. You see company after company mm -hmm. that is revisiting its willingness to have a footprint mm -hmm. in Uyghur regions in China. You see companies looking to diversify their supply chains to lower risk mm -hmm. sources. You see companies for the first time having really meaningful supply chain due diligence right. so that they can get to the bottom mm -hmm. of what is coming into their products before mm -hmm. they ship them to the United States. It is unprecedented. The movement, the improvement mm -hmm. in supply chains that we have seen since we started enforcing this law here at the Department of Homeland Security mm -hmm. two years ago. There is a lot more work to do, but make no mistake, mm -hmm. the community knows have to know their supply chains mm -hmm. and that we have zero tolerance for the importation of products made with forced labor, including forced labor by Uyghurs mm -hmm. in Xinjiang province. Thank you. Uh, another question I have is, uh, of course, you know, the Chinese government using a lot of Uyghurs to slave or forced labor. They're producing a lot of different products, exporting to the U.S. Recently, Outlaw Ocean also did an amazing investigation regarding China's fishing industry. They use Uyghurs in Shandong province, for for example, in the Qishan group, uh, to produce fish. A lot of uh, fish are uh, have been actually exported to the US. I mean, they, 
But other countries, you know, not only directly from China, for example, from Vietnam, Bangladesh, India, and Malaysia, basically the Chinese government, uh, because of the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, they're trying to diversify, diversify their own supply chains by using third countries to export their products of the, to the U.S. So how is Homeland uh, Security, Department of Homeland Security, dealing with this situation? Some of the movement of supply chains mm -hmm. is actually quite welcome. Yes. If companies are moving operations mm -hmm. out of Xinjiang mm -hmm. province yes. and to other countries around yeah. the world mm -hmm. where there is more integrity yes. and reliability to the supply chain mm -hmm. and it is easier to validate that it's clean from a forced labor perspective, yes. that's a welcome development. Mm -hmm. Another story altogether mm -hmm. is something we call transshipment, mm -hmm. which is where to conceal mm -hmm. the true provenance of goods. Right. Uh, those goods are simply routed around through third countries and then sent to the United States. Mm -hmm. That we will not tolerate. Mm -hmm. We have made transshipment an enforcement priority, mm -hmm. and we actively investigate and mm -hmm. bring enforcement action anytime we see evidence of transshipment, including mm -hmm. through countries like those you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I will note that if you go to mm -hmm. our data, our enforcement data, mm -hmm. on our forced labor enforcement, which is all publicly available, we made that publicly available so the world can see, mm -hmm. many of the shipments that are detained are actually not originating in China. Right. They're originating in mm -hmm. other countries, a lot of them in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. but because there, is, there are illicit mm -hmm. uh, supply chain feeds into those. And so we are all over it from an enforcement perspective. And uh, let's talk about the Chinese online retailers, Shane and Temu. On a daily basis, they ship like a million packages to the U.S. And uh, Bloomberg actually, you know, reporter last year, she purchased some clothing from uh, Shane. Uh, then she had it in Germany, I think, they, through DNA testing. They found the cotton, the Xinjiang cotton. So how is Department of Homeland Security dealing with this kind of China's big online retailers, uh, Shein and Tamo, kind of like, uh, you know, going around the, the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act to continue to export products come from the Uyghur region. Well, let me be clear. Mm -hmm. Well, first, I'll just say I'm not going to address any particular company. Okay. We don't talk about particular companies, particular okay. investigations, and the like. Mm -hmm. But let me be clear. Mm -hmm. The Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act mm -hmm. applies to any import mm -hmm. into this country. Okay. That includes fast fashion imports mm -hmm. and includes any other kind of imports. And mm -hmm. if we have evidence that any product coming in is tainted by forced labor, we're going to bring enforcement. We believe that mm -hmm. a long-standing uh, exception to our customs law called the de minimis exception right. yes. uh, is a source of concern mm -hmm and that we need to work together with Congress mm -hmm. on what should be done to address it. Mm -hmm. Under the de minimis exception, shipments worth less than $800 right. are uh, subject to less data collection, mm -hmm. uh, and it makes it harder to conduct investigative activities. Mm -hmm. We are very concerned mm -hmm. that the use of de minimis can undermine our enforcement of forced labor laws, mm -hmm. also laws prohibiting the importation of fentanyl. Right or counterfeit items, mm -hmm. or any other number of contraband mm -hmm. items. This is something we're quite attuned to, mm -hmm. and we are looking at potential solutions, and you should expect more to come in that regard. And uh, the Chinese government has been accusing the U.S. government of fabricating the Uyghur genocide and Uyghur forced labor, calling it the you know, uh, lies of 21st century. So, and also China is saying, you know, uh, because uh, Americans, you know, U.S.-led Western countries, they don't want the China to rise. That's why they are making up all the stories about forced labor genocide to put us down. So that is a narrative they are selling to, you know, Muslim countries, other countries, you know, that that's kind of hostile to the U.S. So what's your response to these accusations? Perpetrators of genocide and atrocities mm -hmm. often lie and say that those things didn't happen. I come from a Jewish American family. Mm -hmm. I understand the history of genocide and human rights atrocities that can be targeted at a population, a vulnerable population. 
and I see a similar history when I talk to members of the Uyghur American community. When I was at that event in Fairfax, Virginia, I spoke with three women who had been in Uyghur internment camps. There's no denying the stories. There's no denying the extensive evidence of human rights violations, of forced labor, of trying to cleanse an ethnic group. And we in the United States government, we at the Department of Homeland Security, will not keep silent on it. Thank you.